Uh, this video is a race against time because the sun is coming round and it's going to ruin my lighting. So I just saw Captain Marvel. I'm a bit late. <laughs> Sorry if anyone wanted a, a timely review so you could make up your mind soon after it came out. It's been like a week and a bit. Uh, whatever. Before I get into spoilers, I guess here's the quick spoiler free bit. It's pretty good. If you like the Marvel movies, you will also like this because it's one of them. Uh, there's some weird kind of pacing choices in the movie. I'm not sure if I liked them or didn't because they kind of work on different levels. Uh, kind of hard to explain without without ruining the movie. Uh, there's some fun action scenes. There's some fun kind of like buddy cop bits between uh, Brie Larson and Sam Jackson, which is a lot of fun. That's a really fun bit of the movie. Some cool fight scenes. There's a, like a decent amount of 90s-ness to it. Uh, I was a bit worried about it from the trailers, but they don't go too overboard on the... It's the 90s. There's a cute cat. If you've seen the trailer, you've seen the cute cat. The cat's cute. Uh, there's also a cute kid. <laughs> That's it for spoilers. You already know if you're gonna go see this film. If you are invested in seeing all the Marvel films, you're gonna go see the film. If you don't like the Marvel movies, probably not gonna be the one that changes your mind. Yeah, but it's fun. Kind of middle of the pack in terms of the Marvel films. Uh, spoilers from here. If you don't want Captain Marvel ruined, get out of here. I'm gonna talk about the whole movie. I don't really know where to start. I suppose I already mentioned that the pacing is weird, so I guess I will tell you about that. So, we start on whatever the Kree planet is. Brie Larson is there, her kind of mentor is Jude Law. I like Jude Law a lot, it's nice seeing him and stuff that isn't the crimes of Grindelwald, because that movie was horrible. Jude Law doesn't get to be in a whole lot of the film, but it, it, I like seeing him. They have like a little team, and they go on missions, and so the first 10, 10 15 minutes is them off on like a mission. Uh, Brie Larson gets captured by the nasty scroll. Oh no, they're green shape-changing people. And they're looking for something in Brie Larson's brain, and then Brie Larson escapes and ends up on Earth, and and then the movie can kind of start properly. And we also get like quite a few flashbacks of Brie Larson's life on Earth because the the Kree kidnapped her basically, and and brainwashed her, and trained her to be like one of their soldiers. The weirdness of the pacing comes in with like the the main story is happening on Earth. Brie Larson's got to find this lady because the scroll are looking for her, so she needs to get there first. But then, like, kind of slotted in, we've got, like, bits of, of Jude Law in his spaceship coming to Earth, and also, like, flashbacks of Brie Larson's past. It's kind of jumping about a lot. It's a bit weird, and I would kind of prefer it if they did it a bit more linear. And I'm not sure how to, to have done it there, because you can't do it linear and then have the twist that they have, because I kind of like the idea of of learning uh, Captain Marvel's past at the same time that she does. But I, I would think maybe, I don't know, be more consistent with it, because like they have this long flashback towards the end of her, like throughout her life, like getting knocked down, but then getting back up again. Great, that's a good motif to have, like a nice thing. You can't keep Captain Marvel down, because she keeps getting back up. But that's the first time they do it, and you just get like some of these really quick like flashes throughout her life, and it would have been nice to have that fleshed out a bit. I think that's going to be my main complaint with the movie, is that there's a lot of good ideas, but I wish they were fleshed out more. Brie Larson's got, her, she's lived on the Kree planet for six years. She's got this team, this little like elite team of experts, and they go on missions together. That's really fun. I would have liked to learn more about that. So when when she learns that the Kree are actually the bad guys, there's more emotion behind it. When she has to fight her old team, and maybe each of them has special skills, and they know how to beat Captain Marvel because they were on the same team for all this time. Um, but but no, she finds out that the Kree are bad, and then the next time she sees them, she's just ready to punch them all. She doesn't care about these people she's known for the last six years. The people who were the only memories that she has, she'll just fight them. But I would have liked, I don't know, to learn more about the dynamics of the group, because you get like a little bit of that at the start, 
There's the dude from Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, I'll put a picture of him up so you know who I'm on about. They're like chatting and he's like, I, I never joke. I laugh on the inside. It's like, okay, that's a bit of characterization. There's Gemma Chan, who's like an English actress who's been around forever. Not really forever. So it was nice to see her here and she's blue. That's, that's something I quite like explained. Uh, why were some of the crew blue and some of them not? So yeah, I would have liked to know more about about their little team. I would also have liked kind of more fleshing out done on Brie Larson's past because we meet her friend and her friend's daughter and they're like really cool and they, they've got a cool dynamic going on with Brie Larson's character. See them kind of interacting for like a very brief amount of time in a flashback. And it would have been nice to have like Brie Larson get more of her memories back so you can find out more about their friendship or whatever. And they worked under this doctor, Dr. Warren, I think. And we're constantly told how great this Dr. Warren is. We barely get any information about her. We're just constantly told how great she is. And you get like maybe two minutes of her on the screen. She spends more time being the face of the evil Cree intelligence bad guy than she does being the actual character. Let's talk about some good stuff. I've just been complaining for a little bit. I like the um, Brie Larson, Nick Fury, buddy cop stuff. That was really fun. They realise that they've got to work together to to because they've all these scrolls around and they don't know who they can trust. So they have to go find the records together and the scrolls have infiltrated S.H.I.E.L.D. So they don't know who they can trust anymore. They've just got to rely on each other. And that bit's really fun. Uh, I think Sam Jackson's great in this film and he gets a lot more to do than he does in the Avengers movies or whatever, because in those, he's he's not allowed to really have a personality. He's just all business all the time. But in this one, it's like a younger Nick Fury. He's joking about it a little bit. It's, it's, it's fun. I liked uh, Ben Mendelsohn a lot. Ben Mendelsohn plays like the lead Skrull. Um, so we're introduced to him as a bad guy and Ben Mendelsohn makes a really good bad guy. If you've seen Rogue One, He's, he's fun in in the very small amount of Rogue One that's fun. Uh, but it's nice seeing him. He gets to be the bad guy, which he kind of always is. Um, but then he gets to, to be a good guy and have a nice moment where he's reunited with his family. So it's, it's all good things. I like Ben Mendelsohn a lot. There's a moment in the film and there's a really obnoxious song choice. It's, it's the big like final fight of the film and Captain Marvel was getting ready to beat up some bad guys and they start playing Just a Girl by No Doubt. They really didn't need to do it. And like, I wasn't mad about it, but it was just like, so on the nose that what they were going for, that like, yeah, I, I would have preferred if you did something else. Captain Marvel herself is kind of like a, a weird mixed bag of like the other Avengers just kind of mashed together because she's like a kind of clever quippy kind of Iron Man-esque but also like she just wants to punch her way out of any situation so it's like Thor and I kind of like it but I feel like they could do with like refining the personality they're going for and and you know that they're going to do that in Endgame because when you got all the characters coming together they kind of get you get smushed down into your one trait. So I'm, I'm interested to see what they go for with Captain Marvel, because she's a little bit all over the place at the moment. If, if you like Marvel movies, go see it. If you want to prepare for Endgame, I guess go see it. Because that comes out in like a month. I'm hoping it'll make me like Infinity War a bit more. The post credit scene was her coming back to Earth. She just left for like 20 years and then just came back like as soon as they rang her. Wondering if the uh, the little girl from from Captain Marvel will be in Endgame, and she's grown up now, probably be like thirty. So that's it. Um, like and subscribe, I guess. Uh, comment what you thought of the film. It's it's a Marvel movie. <laughs> it's maybe the marveliest Marvel movie. Uh, they've they've been doing these for ten years. They've honed it down to a fine craft. And I'll see you next time. I'll be talking about something obscure again. Like, there's only so many big Marvel movies. Although, before the movie, there were four trailers for superhero movies.
4 Shazam Avengers Endgame Spider-Man 2 and the X- X-Men Dark Phoenix oh my god it's so many I'll, I'll see some of them maybe not all of them but some of them bye <laughs>